Inflation, interest rate hikes, recession, price drops, real estate market crash. I'm sure those are all terms that you've seen in the headlines lately, and I think it's time we chat about them. I'm Monica Villalobos, realtor here in beautiful, sunny Anaheim, California, and I think it's time we delve into these topics and chat about it a little bit. Stay tuned to learn some more. Come on in. I live in beautiful, sunny Anaheim, California, and well, I'm also a real estate agent here, and I sell a lot of homes in Anaheim. I would say living in Anaheim, it's like a dream come true. Let's go take a look. All right, let's get right into it. First, let's talk about inflation, okay? By definition, inflation is a general increase in prices and fall in the purchasing value of money. In layman's terms, it costs more and it reduces your affordability. That's basically it. And we're feeling it. We're seeing everything going up in price. Gas prices, groceries, uh, cost of goods, construction, um, you name it, everything is going up and we're feeling it in our pockets. Nothing's different with the housing market. So this has obviously affected affordability in our local market. The next hot topic word has been recession. And I uh, hate to break it to you guys, but we're technically in a recession. So, but what does that actually mean? Definition, please. <laughs> Here we go. So, it is a period of temporary economic decline during which trade and industrial activity are reduced, generally identified by a fall in GDP in two successive quarters. And guess what? Two quarters. That has happened. So, we are officially in a recession. Um, but because we're in a recession, doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to be in a housing market crash, but we can go over that later and I'll show you. Actually, here is a chart that'll show you what's happened in past recessions. As you can see, the only recession that had significant decline in home values was the Great Recession of 2008. That was the housing market decline. This recession was caused by poor lending practices in the housing market. So that is why it's such a gigantic difference among all the other recessions that are still showing home appreciation. Anyway, let's move on. So I bring up the word recession because it does a couple of things. Um, it causes less people to spend money. Um, there are potentially layoffs, less jobs, less money able to be spent. There's a lot more money being saved. So in order to hedge against inflation, what's happening is the feds have been raising the interest rates. So interest rates have gone up significantly since the beginning of the year. And basically we started in the approximately the low 3% in the beginning of the year, and now we're hovering the low sixes. So it's a gigantic leap, but just so you can kind of see the affordability, here's an example. So let's say you have 10% down on a home and you want to keep your payment under 4,000 a month, okay? So back in January, when rates were about three and a quarter percent, you'd be able to afford a home a little over a million dollars, okay? So now where interest rates are a little above 6%, your affordability drops significantly down to about $731,000 purchase price. So that's a, that's a huge difference. Okay, so I'm doing the math and that's about 28% drop in affordability. So that's pretty significant. And unless you wanna spend more money per month on your mortgage, you're probably not gonna get the home that you want for 731,000 versus the million plus that you were gonna be able to afford prior. So keep that in mind. But let's kind of move on. So let's talk about the real estate market we're in right now. So we're in the summer market and historically speaking, 
we're typically going to see a lot of people go on vacation, so a lot of out-of-towners, and we typically see more listings hit the market and inventory begins to climb. So that's exactly what's happening. However, it's happening on a different scale. But you know what I'm finding very interesting as a real estate professional is the data, okay? So there's some specific data points that I will be following and that any great agent will be following as well. So let me put on my spectacles, okay? So let's talk about those. The time on market that a listing stays active before it goes into contract, okay? So that's one of the stats. Um, next is homes that are actually going under contract. So that's the demand, okay? Next would be inventory of active listings. Now that's how many listings are available for sale, ready for an offer from the perfect buyer. Okay, that's what that is. Next is it gonna be the amount of price reductions, which that is definitely something we're seeing in this market. I'll go over some of those figures. And then the last stat that I'll be watching out for is back on market, okay? There also have been homes that have fallen out of escrow and have come back on the market as active listings and now ready for their new buyer. So those are definitely items that are gonna be leading indicators telling us kind of what market we're in. So I'll be researching that for you and I'll be reporting back, but let's talk about what we've currently got, okay? So I'm basically going to be focusing these numbers on Anaheim, but Anaheim versus Orange County as a whole are very similar. Um, just obviously on a smaller scale, it's just one city. So first of all, let's talk about days on market, okay? So typically, in the past two years, you'd hear a home hit the market, and after that first weekend, there was 30 offers, and it was in escrow that following week. That was the norm for the past two years, practically. So before, I would say, a year ago, because that's the stat I have down here. So a year ago for days on market, homes were selling on average in eight days. May of this year, that stat remained the same. However, in June, we started to see that number increase just a little bit. We saw it increase to about 10 days, which is still pretty quick. But I have been paying attention to how long it's taking listings to get into escrow, July will definitely be a different figure. So stay tuned when we talk about July's numbers. Anyway, I'm gonna nerd out on this stuff. Next stat, that's going to be our pendings, our demand um, under contract. And that's about 85 homes that went under contract in the past month with approximately 254 active listings for the month of June. Okay, let's talk about price reductions because we're definitely seeing that in the market now where we didn't really see it before. The price reductions that we were seeing before were typically because there was an over, overzealous seller who just wanted to price their home really high, hoping that they'd have that one buyer that would pay that price. Um, but typically what would happen is the home would sit on the market they wouldn't get offers, so they would reduce the price. Anyway, so now we're seeing more price drops, so more price reductions. And now the reason is that homes are sitting on the market a little bit longer. Sellers are opting to reduce the price to kind of refresh the listing, get more eyeballs on it, get more interest. So what we saw last month was, oh my goodness, 66 price reductions. So this is gonna be a really, really critical um, data point. So I'm really gonna be paying attention to this. Remember, there were about 250 homes that were active in the month of June. And so that's about a 25%, uh, or that's about 25% of the homes that were listed in June that had a price reduction. So one in four homes had a price reduction last month. So let's see if that value ends up going up for the following month, for July, the month we're in. Um, we'll see. 
That's very interesting. I'm curious to see what happens there. Let's talk about the last stat and that's back on the market. Meaning that the buyer that was in escrow had to cancel and now the home is available again for sale. So first of all, what's the reason this is happening? So if a buyer didn't lock in their rate in time, potentially the rate may have gone up too high to where they could no longer afford the home and they had to cancel the deal. That could be one of the, that could be one of the factors. There's many factors of canceling, but we're gonna keep a close eye on this figure as well. Um, so last, in the last month, there were only 16 that fell out of escrow in Anaheim. So that's not terrible. So out of that 250, so that's about 6% that fell out. That seems like a pretty normal figure, um, but we'll definitely keep a close eye on that one and see what it's like for the month of July. Okay, so we went over the stats, we went over data points. I'm sure there's gonna be more questions and we'll go over more of them next month when we chat about July's numbers and compare. But if you are a buyer out there or you're thinking about buying a home, let's talk about it. Let's talk about your fears, concerns, your wants, your needs. This is going into a different market and there are some benefits and some drawbacks of buying a home now. So I would definitely want to know what your scenario is and I want to be able to help you the most effectively as I possibly can. So here's a few things that I think you should know about before we even meet. But of course, we've got to talk about interest rates and how they've been going up. So that's gonna affect your affordability. So we're gonna wanna know how much payment you can afford and how much payment you want it to be at, how long you're gonna be in the home, your risk tolerance, there's all kinds of things that we wanna know, okay? Um, next is, well, you actually have a little bit of a benefit right now as a buyer. Now that homes are sitting on the market a little bit longer, sellers are more willing to give a little bit more to you as the buyer, especially if it's a home that's been sitting on the market for a while, you might be able to get seller credits back. We haven't seen those in years, but you have more opportunity to negotiate. So keep that in mind. On the flip side, if you are a seller or if you're thinking about selling now, in the near future, next year, these data points are gonna be crucial so you know what to expect in the kind of market that we're in currently or will be in when you decide to sell. So, um, very important to remember these few things. First of all, is the uh, buyer demand. So the amount of showings that you get, the amount of offers that you get, um, first of all, it's gonna be a little bit of a slowdown. Second, we're gonna probably see the days on market start to tick up a little bit more. So where your home normally would have sold in the first weekend, most likely that's not gonna happen. And if it takes longer than the expected market time, expect potentially a price reduction or two. So keep that in mind to set your expectations for the selling process. But obviously, we wanna keep you as informed as possible so that when it does come time to get your home on the market, we can come up with the best strategy to net you the most money in your pocket at the end of the day. So give me a call if you wanna talk about anything real estate related, selling, buying, whatever. But here's my commitment to you guys. So I am such a nerd when it comes to these data points. So. I'm going to make it my mission to review all these data points every month. And so I will be coming on here to explain the changes in the real estate market monthly and potentially even in between if there's any big changes that occur. So with that being said, just to reiterate what we're gonna talk about. So um, we're gonna talk about days on market. So how long homes are sitting on the market before they go under contract. Um, we're gonna talk about those homes that are under contract, which is the buyer demand. We're gonna talk about how many active homes we have, how much inventory, that's the supply. We're gonna talk about price reductions. We're gonna talk about 
homes that go back on the market. And something I also didn't mention was our list to sell price ratio. We're gonna be following that figure very closely as well because that's going to play a factor in offers and what to offer, um, how offers are gonna be coming in if you're a seller. So that's more, more um, of an extra bonus that we'll talk about as well. So anyway, so if you are interested in learning more about the real estate market and the changes that will be happening in the market, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or do need help in buying, selling, whatever it is real estate related, please give me a call. My number is here. Or I'll also link my calendar in the description below in case you just wanna click, pick a time that you wanna chat and I'll give you a call then. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching today. Um, thank you for learning about the real estate market with me. And I look forward to seeing you next week. So I guess it's my time to go now, but I guess I'll see you real soon. <laughs>